Hello, hello, it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy and Happy New Year. It is Thursday, December 31st, 2020, the last day of the year and the last stamp therapy of the year. Are you guys ready to stamp along with me? I am bringing out this template. We did this back in the spring when all this craziness was first starting. <laughs> and I thought it would be fun to end the year with it because it's such a fun, um, such a fun card set and such an easy way to make some cards that are a little bit different, a little bit fun. So uh, this handout I've already linked in the description of the video so you can find it there. Um, we're going to go over some basic card making folds and some basic fun folds. And then we're gonna launch into some easy layering with some designer paper. So if you would like to stamp along with me, you are going to need eight sheets of colored cardstock, two sheets of white cardstock or vanilla, and one 12 by 12 sheet of designer paper. You're also gonna want a paper trimmer with um, a scoring blade. So if you have those items and you're ready to go, leave me a comment, give me a heart or a thumbs up. Let me know you're ready to stamp. It's okay if you're just watching tonight. Um, I hope you'll tune in again on the replay and maybe follow along with us. But I know sometimes it's fun just to to watch and get an idea of what we're doing and then you can follow along. But uh, before we get started, I have two cards to share with you. A little mail call. I've been doing this in my Thursday night stamp therapy. I got two special cards in the mail this week and I just wanted to, to share them with you really quick before we get started. So this first one is from Janet Casto and it's so fun. I don't know if they're still in here. They're, um, <laughs> I opened the envelope I was in the car and all these fun little... Um, oh, they're still in the envelope. Uh, these fun little punch outs, like little confetti. And so it, it felt like such a celebration to open up this card. Thank you so much, Janet. Happy New Year. This is an older Stampin' Up! stamp. It's not current anymore, but what a fun stamp to celebrate the new year. I have some uh, cards I'm working on for my team that are going to be kind of a new year celebration instead of Christmas cards. So I, I kind of like the idea of celebrating especially this year we need to celebrate the new year oh my goodness the second card I got is from another team member Kim Kasanik and oh my heavens look at this gorgeousness I seriously can't get over how pretty this card is so we've got misty moonlight in the trimming the town designer paper this little laser cut gold frame is from the gold greenery i think it's called in the annual catalog laser cut paper and then we've got a die cut here with the gold embossing um the specialty poinsettia paper cut out and then also some die cut from the blue glimmer paper just such a gorgeous color combination I'm loving this gorgeous card. Thank you so much, Kim. It was so great to hear from you too. Okay, so those are the two cards I got. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who sends me cards because it really makes my day. I love getting a little smile in the mailbox, just like I know all of your friends and family love to get your cards um, as well. So I hope, we're gonna make 12 cards tonight and I hope that you will send them. Um, I guess not tomorrow, but the next day. I hope you'll send them on the next day on Saturday to friends and family to say hello, to say Happy New Year. Let them know you're thinking of them. Um, what kind of stamps are you using tonight? Are you just kind of making the outline and going to decorate later? Or maybe you've got your stuff ready to de decorate? We're going to get started with the um, paper cutter. And we're going to do some of the basic card folds here. And then we're going to cut our layers and launch into assembling the cards. So I hope that you're ready. And um, if you're not, uh, well, if you're watching the replay, you can always pause it. And I'm going to try to go slow. So if you are following along, hopefully you'll be able to to follow along. Okay, so in the supply list, I said that you needed six pieces of cardstock for the card bases, and I've chosen to use two different colors because I couldn't decide. So I've got um, Seaside Spray and Blushing Bride, and then I have yellow for my layers, white for the inside, and then I'm using some of the new designer paper that goes with the Friends Are Like Seashells. Sweet, I'll show you some of that good stuff. Um, in, in a second here, but, oh my gosh, I'm so hot. I made soup tonight and I just feel like I'm overheated. 
And so <laughs> my husband was bringing me a hair clip to pull my hair back. All right. So I'm putting the designer paper aside. I'm putting the layers and the white aside. We're going to do that next. But first is the basic card making folds. Okay. So when you are a new card maker, uh, there are two ways that you can cut your eight and a half by 11 cardstock, right? So most people I would, I think cut here in half. So they bring their cardstock to five and a half and they cut like this and they get two pieces of cardstock and that makes two cards. So I like to score my cards in half. So when I cut at five and a half, I turn the other way and I score at four and a quarter. And this is your basic card, right? You guys know how to do that. So you score at four and a quarter. Okay, the other way to cut your card is to cut the skinny way. So I line up four and a quarter and cut down here and I've got two long pieces, again, two card bases, and then I line up at five and a half. So the magic numbers are always four and a quarter and five and a half. You cut at one and score at the other. Okay, so those are the two basic card folds. One of them has a side fold, one of them has a top fold, but you can always turn them and, and have this be the top fold and this be a side fold. So there's lots of ways you can do it, but that's the basic, those are the two basic card folds, right? Okay, so let's move on to the fun folds. There are two, uh, two basic fun folds. So the first one, uh, we're going to have that score line at four and a quarter. And then the second score line is at two and one eighth. So let me write this down. Okay. So this we're, we're going over basic fun folds. Okay. So this, we have a five and a half by eight and a half cardstock and we're scoring at two and one eighth and four and a quarter. Okay, so two and one eighth and four and a quarter. And so the result is then you have a score down the middle and then you can fold that back. And this is a Z fold card. All of these measurements are in this handout, which again is linked in the description of the video. So you can print this out if you haven't already. It's a really great guide to keep in your stamp room um, as you're making cards and, and wanting to up your game a little bit and do some fun folds. Okay, so we've got the Z fold. Okay, you can also make a Z fold with your card that goes the long way. So for that one, this is four and a quarter by 11 inches. And you're going to score at two and three quarter inches and five and a half inches. <laughs> Sorry, my handwriting is so sloppy. Okay, two and a quarter, two and three quarters and five and a half. Okay, so I already got the five and a half. I'm gonna put it in and do two and three quarters. Essentially what we're doing is we're scoring in half. Okay, so we've got, we've got the card stock in half and then this, is a half and you're gonna fold it back. Okay, so that's Z fold the other way. Z, cause it looks like a Z. Okay. Hopefully you guys are following along okay. <laughs> so those are the first two fun folds, the Z folds. And we talked about the portrait and the landscape version. The next fun fold is the gate fold. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to cut a new piece of a new piece of blushing bride so that I don't have any score lines. So for the gate fold, you're going to do the same half sheets of cardstock, but then instead of a, a score in the middle, you're going to score um, from both ends. So for this one, we're going to score at two and one eighth. So this is five and a half by eight and a half. And you're going to score at two and one eighth and six and three eighths. Okay, so two and an eighth, that is a quarter of the cardstock. 
and then um, you're going to move the score line to four and a quarter, which essentially then is six and three eighths because two and an eighth and four and a quarter is six and three eighths. Okay, so then you're gonna score again. And so the inside, this doesn't look right. <laughs> oh, that should be two. No, that was right. It just looks funny to me. Okay. Does it meet in the middle? There's our test. Ah, not quite. What was off on this? Okay, here's how to fix this, because this happens to me all the time. Okay, so we were trying to do a gatefold that meets in the middle, and it didn't quite meet in the middle. So I'm going to push the middles together, and this sort of bows out, and then I'm going to take my bone folder, and I'm going to fold it down and even it out to sort of force the new fold. Okay, so now they meet in the middle. Okay, that's a gate fold. Let's try that again. Two and one eighth is the first score. And then the second score is six and three eighths inch. So let's see here, I got six. It's so hard to see my six and three eighths. That's why I like to line it up at four and a quarter. The score line should be at four and a quarter. The six and three eighths is kind of like lost in there. Okay. I think I lined it up a little bit better. So this is five and a half by eight and a half, score at two and an eighth and six and three eighths, which is essentially two and one eighth from each side. Two and an eighth and two and an eighth, and they meet in the middle. Okay, so this is the basic gate fold, and they open up like a gate. You can do the same gate fold card with your long cardstock, but your measurements are just going to be a little bit different. Okay, so let's let's write it down. This is four and a quarter by eleven inches, and you're going to score at two and three quarter inches and eight and one quarter inch. Put that aside so you don't get mixed up. Okay, so the first score is two and three quarter inches, which is half of five and a half. That's normally where we score this one in half. And then you're gonna open that up again and then bring it over to eight and a quarter and that leaves five and a half inside so that when you fold these over, they should meet in the middle. And again, if they don't, like I have a really tiny little small gap, so I'm just gonna kind of push them together and then use the bone folder to sort of reinforce that refold. Okay. So there's, a, there's the basic gate folds. This is the horizontal or portrait, not portrait, horizontal landscape is the other word. Okay, so there's the landscape gatefold, the portrait gatefold, there's another portrait gatefold, and then we also did the Z folds, portrait Z fold, landscape Z fold. <laughs> <laughs> she said good save yep all right are you guys following along let's do the rest of our cardstock we're gonna do some of them as z folds and some of them are gate folds and you can do whichever one you prefer i'll just walk through each of them again so the first one is the z fold so for this one i have um eight and a half by five and a half i've scored at four and a quarter and then i'm gonna go halvesies so on all these folds if you ever forget, it's just half, right? So for the Z fold, you fold it in half and then you fold it half back. For that gate fold, you're, you're, you're still scoring and folding at the halves, but you're doing the outside halves and then folding them in to create a full card front. Okay, so that was the Z fold portrait. Let's do a Z fold landscape. So new fresh paper, we're cutting in half the long way. So this is going four and a quarter. And I'm going to score 
at two and three quarters, that's half, and five and a half. I should say that's a quarter. So two and three quarter is a, a quarter, but it's half of five and a half. Okay, so that is our landscape Z fold. This is gonna fold back. There we go, like that. Okay, landscape Z folds. Portrait Z folds. Let's cut up the rest of our cardstock. I'm gonna do another. I'm gonna do another Z fold since I'm already, since I'm already digging the Z folds over here. I'm gonna go two and three quarters and five and a half. This is a. These fun folds are kind of a really great first step in, in stepping up your cards. So if you are like a simple card maker and you wanna try something different, these basic fun folds are a really great way to just change a little bit about your card and um, and and make it kind of fun and special. So um, today really is all about easy, like I said, basic card making folds. All right, let's go down and do some more gate folds. So. For the gate folds here, I'm going to, um, let's start with the portrait one. So I'm gonna cut at five and a half. This time we're doing a gate fold. So I'm using the scoring blade, score a two and one eight. And I'm gonna just turn it around because it's easier, two and one eighth. And again, sometimes, you know, if the cardstock's not exactly eight and a half, sometimes they won't quite line up in the middle. And again, there's one that doesn't. So this is not an uncommon thing. Even if you're measuring correctly, sometimes the cardstock is just not exactly an exact measurement. So just hold those together in the middle and use your bone folder to give it a recrease it so that they have a nice, nice meeting in the middle. Do that again. Two and one eighth inch. That's a quarter of the cardstock. And then there's my line. Yeah. Six and three eighths, or two and an eighth from the side again. Bone folders are good whether you're recreasing or just getting a good crease to begin with. We're folding the cardstock a little bit differently than maybe it's used to being folded. So bone folders are really good for this. Okay, portrait gatefold. Let's do some landscape gatefolds with the seaside spray. So for this one, we're going to cut in half the long way, lining up at four and a quarter up here and cutting down. Happy New Year, Kathy. <laughs> Oh, you guys have been kind of quiet. Are you guys stamping along with me? Or are you just watching for now? Yeah, Susan, you heard my dogs. They're saying Happy New Year, too. They're so whiny tonight. I'm not sure what's going on. We we were so good about walking them um, every day, and it's gotten really cold here. And so we, we've we missed a couple days of walking. So I think they're just not used to, not used to having having that long potty break. Oh, I didn't tell you, I just did it here. Let's talk through with this one. <laughs> I got I got started with the chatting. All right, so for the gate folds again, we're gonna line up at two and three quarters and score. And then the second score line, if you're opening up, is eight and one quarter. If you're flipping it around, you're gonna just do two and three quarters again. This leaves a five and a half inch space in the middle, which is the width of a regular card. And we're gonna fold those in. And again, like mine don't quite meet in the middle. So I'm just gonna kind of force them to meet and then re-score re with the bone folder to keep that new, that's pretty good, keep that new line. So close, so close. That's better. All right. Um, 
Oh, Bonnie, that's a good tip. So Bonnie says she only scores on one side and then she takes and folds it um, to meet in the middle. So I like to use the scoring blade. Let me show you really quick, because especially I think when you're doing these long ones, um, sometimes I get wicked creases that I just, um, that drive me crazy. So let, let's, let's try. I'm going to show you here. Um, this, so this is what Bonnie's saying. She does, um, she scores one side, so two and three quarters, and then she takes the bone folder and she brings that to the middle and then, um, and then gives it like that, that same score. So this works as well. And if you're having problems with the meeting in the middle, that's a good technique. But I find that the crease is just a little, um, rougher sometimes. And it, it really depends on the pack of cardstock. Cause what happens when you're scoring cardstock is you're breaking the fibers in the cardstock. And so, um, depending on how the paper was made and cut, the fibers may be running different directions. So sometimes it's really easy to fold the card over and give it a good crease yourself. And other times there's a lot of resistance and that's when you're going to see a lot of the, the weird breakage because it's breaking uh, in a, at a natural point where the fibers are and maybe not necessarily in a straight line. Okay, so that wasn't so hot. I mean, that wasn't so bad is what I meant to say. All right, so we've got all kinds of card bases now that are really fun folds. We've got some gate folds. We've got some Z folds. Yours might all be the same color. I used two different colors tonight that matched my designer paper. And these colors really remind me of... Um, like baby cards. We're not making baby cards, but you could make baby cards. Blushing Bride and Seaside Spray are the colors here. I'm going to remove all my post-it notes. All of these measurements are in this, this handout. So if you print this out um, or just look at the PDF online and copy it, then um, you'll have all the measurements that I shared. You can walk through and create a stack of as many cards as you want using these folds and these measurements. So be sure to download and print this out um, so that you have that handy. Um, I'm gonna put these aside right now and now we're gonna cut some um, of the layers to go on our card. So tonight we're gonna keep the cards um, relatively simple. I'm just going to show you some basic card layering. So let's start with the six or not the six by six. It's a 12 by 12. Let's start with the 12 by 12 piece of designer paper. And again, this is, um, this is new. I'm, I'm showing you a little sneak peek. Let me, let me, I, I can't show you the inside of the mini catalog yet. It doesn't start until next week. So we've got just another week. So if there's anything you want from the year end clo closeout sale, just a quick reminder, get it now, all the retiring things from the August catalog, um, you'll want to make sure that you get right now or in the next couple days. Okay, so this paper pack is called Sand and Sea, and I'm going to show you really quick the other designs. It's such a pretty suite with seashells. This is my, um, my mini catalog product share. I always do this every time there's a new catalog, and... Um, I cut all the designer paper and all the ribbon and you get some of all the embellishments. So this is a really great way to, um, to try out and test all the designer paper without having to buy the full packs yourself. So I'm taking signups right now. I'll add the link to the, um, the video description when I'm done. I forgot to put it on there for you, but I'll make sure to add it. So you get everything. You get to try the hydrangea, you get to try the ice cream paper, the new acetate, the um, Valentine paper. Oh my gosh, that one's so pretty. The designer acetate. So you, you get to try it all with this product sampler and it's so much cheaper than buying it all yourself. So not only do you get six by six of all the paper, but then you also get a yard of each ribbon and um, an assortment of the coordinating embellishments. So this is a really great little set. I'm taking orders right now. Um, so watch for that sign up link. I'll put it in the, in the comments in the video description when we're done so you can get that. I will be ordering when the catalog starts on January 5th and then shipping about a week later after everything comes in. I'll have to cut it and package it up for you. So be watching for that. Um, if you haven't already signed up. So here's this paper, Sand and Sea, and you can see we've got these gorgeous colors. 
um, Blushing Bride, Flirty Flamingo, the um, Seaside Spray, So Saffron. This makes me want to go to the beach. <laughs> oh, I know some of you live close to the beach and I am so jealous because we live in the middle of a cornfield and it's cold and <laughs> windy and winter right now. So I would love to be I'd love to be at the beach. Sand and Sea. It comes in 12 by 12. So I'm using this one. You can use any paper that you want for your cards tonight. Um, and I found that um, you can use a, a designer paper that has a direction to it, but it's kind of fun if you if you find a pattern that is non-directional, or at least it doesn't matter which way you have the pattern. And by that, I mean, um, well, I was going to do the strawberries, but then all my cards would have to be vertical. And so I wanted to have some cards that were vertical and what, some that are horizontal. So this paper definitely has a vertical. And this one, like you could have those lines and dots go either way. So it's fun if you have non-directional pattern, but you can still make the same cards even with a, um, a pattern that is directional. Okay, so um, your first cut, well... I was going to say, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to tell you if you have directional paper, but it doesn't really matter because if you cut them horizontal, then you'll put them on the card horizontal. And if you cut them vertical, you'll put them on the card vertical. So it doesn't matter. I thought through it. It's fine. <laughs> All right. So we're going to cut this 12 by 12 into three pieces. So we're going to start at four inches and make a cut and then cut again at four inches. This is a good cut for 12 by 12 paper because it cuts them into even pieces and you'll be able to use every piece of the 12 by 12 designer paper without doing any, without having any waste. Um, yeah, Lynn, sometimes the Midwest is boring. You get it. <laughs> oh, Robin, 80 degrees. I'm so jealous. Oh my gosh. Um, Janice, I'm not sure if your order went through. Um, you order with Flo, I think. So you'll have to check with her and she can check and make sure that it went through okay. Um, and Nancy, yes, the product share is $42. Oh, oh Jan, you were saying that product share order. I will check and make sure that I got your product share order. Nancy is correct. The product share is $42 plus $8 for shipping. Um, and you, if you live near me, you can pick up on the porch if you want to save on shipping. Um, okay, so we're back to cutting the designer paper. We have three um, columns that are four inches. And then we're going to take, and we're cutting them all the same. I'm just going to cut one at a time. So we're going to put it back in and we're going to cut at three inches and then three inches again. And guess what? Three inches. So each of these pieces, we're going to cut into four, um, three inch by four inch pieces. Okay, so I'm going to cut the rest and they're going to be exactly the same. The first cut was four inches and the second, third, fourth, fifth, all the rest of the cuts are three inches. So this way we're getting 12 designer paper layers from one sheet of 12 by 12 designer paper. Um, and so this is really a great way um, when you're making cards to mix it up and make a bunch of cards from the same paper. Now, if you get bored of using the same paper, you can flip and use some of the back sides. That works too, so that's always an option with your designer paper. If your paper is double-sided, then you can flip half of them and use the other half. That's totally up to you. I chose my card bases because all of those colors are in this designer paper. So I've got some um, Blushing Bride, some Seaside Spray, there is some So Saffron, and um, Sahara Sand, and some Dark. I think that's Melon Mambo in there as well. Okay, now we're going to cut layers for the designer paper. Okay, so we want to finish out our card. I like to have a nice layer just to, to keep it clean. So I'm going to cut where we have two pieces of colored cardstock that coordinate with the designer paper. And we're going to cut them both the same way. So we're going to put this in at four and a quarter. And um, 
and then we're going to turn and cut them at three and a quarter. So this is going to go behind the designer paper. So the designer paper is three inches by four inches, and the cardstock layer is going to be three and a quarter inch by four and a quarter inch. Hi, Christina. I'm so glad that you've made it. Hello, Lydia. We are in the middle of prepping our card layers. And um, if you're joining late, we've already done, we used this basic card making fold handout. This is something that I posted and we did back in the spring. So we're just kind of bringing it out uh, like a best of 2020. <laughs> and so we, we talked through and cut our card bases to be Z folds and gate folds. And so now we're just cutting the designer paper and the card stock to um, put on those basic fun folds. So from one sheet of cardstock, I have six pieces that are going to be um, the designer paper layers. So we've got uh, three by four designer paper and that layers onto three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And so that's uh, one sheet, we'll do half. And now we're gonna do the other one. So we're lining up at four and a quarter and then turning and cutting at three and a quarter. So all of the next cuts are gonna be three and a quarter. Hi, Faye. I'm so glad you guys are tuning in tonight. Yes, Melinda, the, the in the video description is the handout um, that you can print out. And so that's already there right now. So when you're done watching or even right now, um, you can click on that link and you can print that out. And that link will be saved in the video description. So if you come back to watch this video, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, you'll be able to find the link to the PDF in in the video description. So make sure to look for it there. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm trying not to go too fast. Are you guys keeping up okay? <laughs> uh, that's, I don't know, that's not it. We have some white cardstock to cut. Okay, so those are the designer paper and the layers for the designer paper. Then I like to have a little white on the inside of my cards. Um, so I'm going to cut these at, um, let's see, I'm, I was just deciding whether they should be the same size as the layer or the, I'm gonna do the same size as the designer paper and make these all three by four. So I'm cutting long first at four inches and then I'm gonna turn it and cut it three inches. And I'll show you why when we layer these, why I decided to go a little smaller instead of the bigger because on some of these, we want them to hide behind um, the cardstock layer, and so um, because we have these these fun folds, I want to make sure that it gets it gets covered completely. So these are all three inches by four inches for the whisper white. These are going to be for the inside. Um, okay, so um, Jan. The designer paper, let me put little post-its on these since you've lost me, I'm so sorry. Um, and again, these measurements are also already in the video description. The designer paper is three inches by four. And then the cardstock is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Oops, forgot the quarter. Okay, for both of these, and especially when you're cutting um, eight and a half by 11 cardstock, I always start with that four inch cut because that's like half. These are the white ones are also the same size as the designer paper. Um, I always start with um, that first cut, cutting it in half and then cutting and then cutting the rest. Um, so I'm starting with that, the three three by four, four inch first, and then three inch, three inch, three inch, again, three inch, three inch, three. And these white pieces, again, are for the inside of the cards. So I've got um, six pieces from each piece of cardstock. So 
um, white and designer paper are three by four. The colored layer is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and put the paper trimmer down there. And while you guys are, um, while you guys are cutting still, I'm gonna, oh, I'm almost out of the paper. Let's get this one out, that one's broken. Might have to get a new bag out. The Stampin' Seal refills come in these plastic bags. Um, and the good thing is they can be recycled. So I, um, I'll set that aside and recycle it. And then um, this comes apart and you've got two pieces. So let's see, these little pegs go on those little pegs. I should say those pegs go into those holes. There we go. And that snaps on. That one's almost out. Okay. So let's take and assemble our designer paper. Okay, Christina says, when cutting cardstock or designer paper, which way is better to cut first? It really depends on your measurements, um, Christina. Um, I try to visualize, and sometimes I actually will draw out a diagram of the um, cardstock and think about, you know, what's the best way to, to cut it before I actually make the cut, right? It's like that old saying, measure twice and cut once. <laughs> Um, so especially with designer paper, if you don't want to quote unquote mess it up, um, it's good to, to draw out, you know, like on a scrap paper, uh, and like, you know, sort of, you're not really measuring, it's not a full size piece, but just on a piece of scrap paper, like I just sort of plot out like how many I can get across and then, um, I figure out which way is best to cut first. Cause sometimes... You cut one way and then you turn and cut the other side the other a different way um so it really just depends on the project that you're making for this one i found that cutting the cardstock at four or four and a quarter first down the middle and then cutting the other um and then cutting the other measurement was easiest for me um so we, I talked briefly about whether or not the designer paper is directional. So it really won't matter because um, if your designer paper is directional and you've cut it portrait, then your cards will be portrait. If you've cut it landscape, then your cards will be landscape. Um, if it's non-directional, like the dots that I'm using here, then you'll have the flexibility to make both portrait and landscape cards. Um, so there's not really... There's not a wrong way, I think. Um, it's just how you put your cards together. But yes, you definitely need to consider whether your designer paper is directional before you start cutting. All right, I need to know. I'm going to take a quick poll. Please tell me, are you staying up or are you planning to stay up until midnight <laughs> to ring in the new year? Uh, you guys know my kids are, uh, they're not young, young. The oldest is 10 and the, or no, the oldest is 17. The youngest is 10 and they are very eager, all of them to stay up until midnight. And so we've got a full night planned. Uh, they're watching a movie right now. We're going to play some games and maybe watch another movie and hang out together. Sometimes I make it up until midnight and <laughs> sometimes... I fall asleep early. <laughs> Last night I was up late and I slept in late. So um, I think I'm good. Like I feel pretty rested. So we'll see. If I watch a movie, then <laughs> the chances go down significantly. <laughs> Being on the couch and putting my feet up definitely will make me sleepy. Okay. So we have our designer paper. We've layered it on the cardstock. And we have um, 
the white cardstock for the inside. I'm so glad to see that most of you are saying you're planning to stamp. That's fantastic. Well, if, if and when we make it to midnight, I will post a family selfie so you can see all of us. So make sure you're on the Julie Stamping Spot Share and Connect group. I would love for you also to share your cards there as well. So please, please, please share your cards. Let us see what you're making. Um, and if you feel so bold, share your own New Year's selfie. If you've made it to midnight, I would love to see how you ring in the new year. Um, and some of you are going to bed before 12 and I totally get that too. <laughs> Sometimes it just feels kind of anticlimactic, doesn't it? You're going to bed after we're done. Yes, Karen. Oh my goodness. Yes. Cindy, kick this year out the door. <laughs> You've already trashed your calendar. <laughs> mm. All right. We're ready to start assembling our cards. But before we do that, in case you're still catching up with all your cutting, I wanted to show you how I am going to be embellishing some of my cards. We've got these really great products in the mini catalog. So I showed you the cover of that. Can't show you the inside yet. The January through June mini catalog starts next week. We're so excited about that. I showed you the Sea and Sand designer paper. And part of that suite is this awesome bundle called Friends Are Like Seashells. And then it has a coordinating die set and a coordinating embossing folder. Um, and so these are these are available as a bundle and this is available separately. And so you can see you can use this embossing folder by itself and you get this beautiful 3D detailed um, shells, but they're also made so that they all coordinate with each other. Okay, so you can um, you can emboss your cardstock and then you can use the die and you can um, you can cut out the embossed images. How awesome is that? <laughs> okay, so that's one option. You can also um, stamp on the die cut so you you can die cut it and then you can stamp it and then you can emboss after you stamp so you've got the die cut and stamped and embossed um, so I did this for the first time before we came on and I wanted to show you a trick for lining them all up together so uh, when I did this one I stamped them all uh, myself and I did kind of struggle a little bit getting them on their straight. So here's a trick I'm going to show you. And this is for putting them all on the same um, block or for using the stamp apparatus. So I have my clean stamps and I've got my die cut and I'm going to line up the stamps on the die cut so that I can have them perfectly lined up where they need to be. And then I'm going to put them on a big block so that I can stamp them all together. And that will help them at least be a little better lined up um, together and instead of being totally off. Let me see. Okay, so this one, is this even the right stamp? Yes. <laughs> that needs to go down like that okay so these are all like upside down so the flat side is the side that's up and now I'm going to take out a big block this is one of the big background stamp blocks and I'm going to push it down so that the um, all the stamps adhere to the block okay and now they are saved in the correct position so let's do Let's see how we did. So I'm gonna ink up the stamps. And then, if you're feeling really lucky, <laughs> you can line them up and stamp, or you could try going the other direction. Um, I feel like I'm coming in blind that way though. Let's, let's see how well we can do. This is where the Stamparatus is really good. Um, and I should have gotten that out. You can do the same thing that I just did with the lining up and the Stamparatus kind of keeps it 
um, you know, in the right position, and then you just add your cardstock. So really, the Stamparatus is, um, is the way to go if you're doing multiples of these. Um, okay, let's see how well I did. <laughs> First, I'm going to, I'm not, I feel like it's hard to get a good, um, good push on it. So I'm just going to give it a little back rub here and let's peel it off and see. Ta-da! Hey, that worked out pretty well. Okay, so here is just the stamped. And here is the um, the embossed image. So you can see that adding the embossing folder really adds so much texture um, to the die cuts. It really is just so beautiful. So uh, when you're lining this up, you can see through. So the embossing folder, I think, is a good thing to do last because then you can line it up really easily and send that through your big shot. I'm gonna do that really quick. My big shot's on the floor. Uh, so hold on one second. And the 3D embossing folder, you're going to use the specialty plate and then your platform for that. Look at that. Gorgeous. Okay, so the, the downside is that all the leaves are on the same die cut, um, but then you can easily cut around them and um, cut them apart to use them individually. And then you've got these great like, um, like seaweed images to use as well. I did say big shot. <laughs> oh, you caught me. Yes. My stamp and cut new boss machine. This die is too big to go in Lucy, my little one. Um, and so I, my son does a lot of die cutting for me and he still uses my big shot. Like I didn't just throw it away, right? Like it's still a good, <laughs> it's still a good die cutting machine. Um, <laughs> So he, he uses the Big Shot, um, and I use the stamp and Cut and Emboss Machine, um, and it was just happened to be on the floor. He, um, honestly, sometimes he's a little bit rough, um, and so I don't want him breaking my new machine. <laughs> I don't care if he breaks the Big Shot, but not the stamp and Cut and Emboss Machine. The Boss. It's like horns. Little devil. Devil shells. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with the big shot. It's still a good machine. Even if we don't sell it anymore. Alright, so I'm gonna use all these little shells on my cards. I just wanted to show you how awesome the embossing folder and the dies, how cool that was that they work together. So uh, if you are a demonstrator, you can order these right now. And if you're not a demonstrator, you can sign up to be a demonstrator and you can get them right now. Or you can wait until January 5th. That's when the mini catalog starts. And, um, and then you'll be able to get all of these goodies, all of the little sneak peeks. Um, so I'm working on, I just have so much on my plate. I'm trying to spend time with the family and also have some things I want to show you. So hopefully in the next couple days, I will get the video done to show you some more samples using some of the mini catalog things. So you guys can see, um, all the beautiful products and I've gotten some really great swaps from my demonstrator friends. So I'll be sharing those in the next few days as well. And you can see how awesome the designer paper is so that you'll sign up for the product share and get, and get um, a little bit of everything. That's really the best way because then you get to try, you can try all the stuff and um and see what you like because it's always so much prettier in person 
Um, and it's always good to see, like, what it looks like. I actually, I, I like the, I like some paper more than I thought I would, and other paper, I, not that I'm disappointed, but just thought maybe I'd like it a little differently. Okay, I'm shoving things to the side. Let's get going with card assembling. I think I promised 12 cards in an hour, and I'm not sure... We're getting close to an hour. <laughs> Let's speed it up. Do -do -do -do. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to speed it up. <laughs> We're just going to be a little more than an hour. Um, okay, so let's. we can start with the card layers and put those on the card. So for this one, I like to use some heavy-duty adhesive, the Seal Plus. Uh, oh, that's not Seal Plus. Where's my Seal Plus? I think I used it all. We'll just use regular Seal. That's fine. I'm going to say I like to have a nice, um, nice heavy duty adhesive to, to keep it on there, but the seal plus should hold up just fine. Um, or the seal seal plus is ideal. Tear and tape is good. Um, so I'm putting adhesive only on one side. And then when you open that up, that's what you get. So this is, um, this is an example of how if your designer paper is horizontal, your card will be landscape. And if your designer paper is vertical, then your card can open um, portrait. And, and that's fine. Like there's not a wrong way. So any way that you've cut your paper, it will work just fine. Okay, so I'm going to just go through and add all of these to the card. So again, I'm, I'm making sure to only put adhesive on one side. Um, and I'm going to add them to all the cards, all the card bases. We have our, our Z folds and our gate folds. And when I made mine, I did kind of a, all the different folds and both both ways. You might have just done like all of the same or you might have a bunch of different ones too. That's totally cool. However you did it, make them your way, make them special. But make sure you only put adhesive on one side because we don't want to don't want to glue our cards closed. That is no fun. Like we need some Jeopardy music. <laughs> if you're just joining today, we're making 12 basic fun fold cards. We've already done the card bases with some gate folds and some Z folds. We've done some easy designer paper layering. The designer paper here is three inches by four inches, and we have layered it onto three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So right now, all of our cards are... Um, have the same kind of basic look to them. They have the designer paper layer in the middle, but they all kind of open in different ways. The gate folds and the Z folds. We have horizontal cards, vertical, portrait landscape. And the next step is going to be to decorate them. So if you have some die cut shapes, tags ready to go, then, um, you'll be able to start decorating your cards immediately. And if not, you might, um, you might come back to the, the decorating part, but I do have some tags cut. And so we're going to, we're, we are going to start assembling some of them, um, with the die cut seashells that we just did. And I have some circles punched. So we're going to see what we can put together and finish off these cards. Okay. Clean and simple, just fantastic. These are gonna be for the inside. I have cut some shells, some shells, <laughs> some circles. These are Sahara sand cardstock. I also 
um, hand cut some shells from the designer paper. So these are the ones that I stamped and these are the ones that I, um, that I cut from designer paper. So this, I cut them from this sheet. So you don't have to have the dies. You can cut them from designer paper and cut by hand. So the idea is that we'll add some, we'll add some sayings and then we can add some sheets, <laughs> seashells, um, and, and create some different cards. So each of these might be a little bit different. I just had a fun idea. I love how this is blended. So I was just thinking I should get out like my, um, my Wink of Stella and, um, and just do some like painting on here. This one's seems like it's really dry. And blend that color a little bit. That might be my, well, I can't tell if I've got some in there. Oh, there it is. I, don't, I didn't want to make a big mess. Um, sometimes the Wink of Stella is really pretty to blend the ink a little bit. I don't know how much it's doing here might be too dry. Oh, that's a big glob. The other thing we have is this really pretty pearlescent designer paper. Not designer paper, this pearlescent um, specialty paper that is in... I should get that out. I don't think I opened it yet. So I will include a piece of this in the product share. It comes as 12 by 12 and um, there are two sheets. Oh, wow. Can you see that shine? Let me, let me get like a piece of whisper white. Here's the white. Okay, so you can definitely see it's like a different shade, but also it has this really great shine to it. Oh, that's really pretty. So if you, um, yeah, <laughs> okay. So if you stamp your, um, your shells on that and then die cut it, like, then you won't need the Wink of Stella. <laughs> it's so pretty. I was hoping to do a little more blending here, but it's not blending so much. So let's try, like, let's just get out. I'm gonna squeeze the lid a little bit and see if I can transfer the ink. So I got a little bit of ink pooling there. And just to just to color in that shell and add a little dimension, a little more color to it with the wink. Well, I think it's hard to see on camera, but it makes a little difference. Okay, so the next thing is just to do some simple layers on here. So I also brought out some ribbon um, because I thought it'd be really pretty to um, have some ribbon or twine, um, linen thread. It would be so pretty on here. So I'm going to do just sort of a collage of elements kind of some dimensionals under the circle hi MC it's okay that you're late we are to the decorating part so um, 
you'll probably want to come back and watch the replay. Doing some really basic fun folds and dressing them up now with some, um, these are shells that were cut from designer paper and we also have some that we stamped and die cut. Friends are like seashells. You collect them along the way. Like that was a little crooked. Okay, so we're gonna do some different things with seashells um, for the front of the cards. And then inside the white pieces, and so this is why I made them a little bit smaller because um, you wanna make sure that it it falls behind the yellow or the, the, the layer. Okay, so you can, I should have stamped this first, but we're going to center that and make sure that it gets covered up. And then we're going to stamp our inside words here. So um, you can also stamp some additional shells. This says you are unique and completely amazing. And I feel like we need a seashell. Let's see what we have that's not already mounted. This is fun. There's a little, a little seashell. We're going to do that in pink. There's so many great words in this set. This is a really great steam set. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And where it goes, I'll follow. <laughs> Will always be my true love. My true love. Love you to the beach and back. Yes, 100%. So you can decorate your cards all a little bit different, even though the um, like the layering of designer paper is the same. You can still customize them so that each card um, is a little bit different, has a different you know assortment of die cuts. The shells are really easy to kind of customize, you know, because we've got all these options. But you can really make each one special special and unique love you to the beach and back and then on the inside I like that same the same words so let's go ahead and do that you are unique and amazing and completely completely amazing um, one thing to note when you're stamping your insides just make sure you're doing it in the same direction that you're doing your card um, so if you're mixing it up, you'll want to make sure that you mix up your, um, insides as well, as far as doing landscape or portrait. Oh, that's really stiff. Woo! Okay, so let's glue this one down first. I can't wait to see how your cards turn out. Please, please, please do share them um, in the Julie's Stamping Spot Share and Connect group. If you're not a member over there already, definitely come on. We have lots of fun sharing our projects, inspiration, um, and just kind of doing even things that are not stamping related. Just having some fun, chatting, hanging out. So please join us there if you don't already. We'd love to have you join us. Yes, I feel like maybe we need one more. I'm gonna have to finish these cards later too because I feel like I need to cut some more seashells especially from the designer paper. 
I love how colorful they are. And they're a really good size as well. We'll do our ribbon. I know, yes, a little sister act. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I cannot stamp without singing or without music, so I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> Uh, I don't claim to be any good, but I do enjoy singing. <laughs> okay. Well, I I have to be honest. My legs are tired, and so am I. So <laughs> I'm not going to decorate all 12 of them um, tonight live, but you can see where I'm going with them. And I definitely am going to finish these up tomorrow and I will share with you my finished cards so that you can see them. And I hope that you will also share your finished cards with me and the rest of the groups so that we can see what you came up with. But for now, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for joining tonight, whether you were just watching or stamping along with me. I hope you enjoyed a little creative therapy to round out 2020. Again, this handout with all the basic card making fold measurements is already linked in the description of the video. I will also add it to the comments as well in case you can find it more easily there. So this is this is a good one to keep in the arsenal when you need to make some cards and want to customize them and make them different, but just need a launching a launching point that is quick and easy. So I hope that you like the layout. I hope that you like the basic card folds. I hope that you have a fantastic year. Thank you so much for tuning in, for supporting my small business. It truly means the world to me and my family. Um, and tonight over dinner, we talked about all of the amazing things we did. It started off, right, like, oh, gosh, we're so glad that this year is over. But then we really started thinking about all the fun things that we did in 2020, even though we were staying home and we were isolating and we were, you know, not not doing all of the things we normally do. We still we're blessed with such a great year and all the fun things that we did and some home improvements and um, some some special new traditions that we started. And so I hope as you reflect on 2020 that you find the same is true for you, that there are hidden blessings in this crazy, terrible year. <laughs> Um, and, and I hope that one of them is stamping here together on Thursday night stamping therapy because I know this year it has been a blessing for me. So thank you for being here. Thank you for stamping with me. Thank you for sharing with me. It truly has been a wonderful 2020 and I look forward to sharing with you every Thursday night in 2021 as well. So happy new year. Tune in next week, although come back sooner because I have paper pumpkin projects that I'll be sharing and new catalog projects that I'll be sharing. You can place an order if you'd like in my online store at juliedavison.com slash join. Nope. The slash shop. <laughs> I started thinking of the next thing I wanted to say. I'd love to have you join my team if you've been thinking about joining as a demonstrator. Um, we have a lot of fun at the Jubilant Stampers. There's over 120 of us across the country, and we'd love to have you join us. And there's a really great offer coming up in celebration, but that's for another night. I will tell you more about that coming soon, I promise. Until then, just have a fantastic night. Happy New Year. Happy stamping. And we'll stamp together soon. Bye.